Before you begin formatting your paragraph, first of all, I want to introduce to you what Microsoft sees as a paragraph. It's not what you learned in your English class, a paragraph being three or four sentences long. It's actually any time you hit the Enter key on the keyboard, also known as a hard return. Now, I go into this more in depth in my Microsoft Word training videos because it's about text and about paragraphs, where in PowerPoint it's a hodgepodge of things of images and text, so I'll give you the basics on it. For example, let me come down here and click on slide four and we can see from our English class, you know, a couple of paragraphs here, three or four sentences. When it comes to formatting your paragraphs, it's going to format not just sentences because I could come here and click at the end here and hit enter and type something else and assume that that's part of this paragraph here. It's not. The test that you can give to find out if this is a paragraph or not, because we don't have the show hide codes up in here like we do in Microsoft Word, is you can give it the uh, triple click test. I mean, that's one way. So for example, if you watch the training video, you'll know that when you double click, it selects a word. Now if I triple click, it selects the whole paragraph. Notice that it doesn't include what's below it because I hit enter, a hard return at the end of that what Microsoft sees as a paragraph and so this is the stepchild that's outside of it. You might as well go ahead and just click before it and give it a hard return so we can actually see the difference or the spacing between this paragraph and that paragraph. Okay. So what's the purpose of this? For example, let's say I want to go ahead and do some alignment of my text within these paragraphs. Well, if I go ahead and I click anywhere in this paragraph, I can come up here on the Home tab in the Paragraph group, and there's my alignment buttons, and when you hover over it, it gives you the shortcut. Click on the center align, and it centers my paragraph in the middle. Okay, I can go ahead and do right align, and it aligns it all to the right-hand side of my little text box here. Notice that it only affects the paragraph here. There's a hard return here that separates this paragraph from that paragraph. That's how Microsoft knows what it sees as a paragraph and what to apply the formatting to. So click up here and I can go back to left align. Now some people may not know this because what they do is they just go ahead and select everything. And when you do that, of course, everything's going to be affected when you click on your center align button. But know that when it comes to formatting your paragraphs, I'm going to click it to go left. All you have to do is just click anywhere within the paragraph and whatever type of formatting you apply to it, for example, like alignment, it's going to affect everything within there until it hits that hard return, which we can't see. There's also an introduction to your alignment buttons. It's on the Home tab in the Paragraph group here. Next, let's go over some columns. Let's say that I'd like this text here, the first paragraph, in the first column, in the second paragraph, and another column. Kind of break things up, make it look nice, kind of like the newspaper. In fact, the newspaper, the reason why they have those short columns is because it's easier to go a short distance with your eye to about yay here than it is to read all the way across and then try to track back to know which line you're reading next. So let's go ahead and apply two columns to this. Click anywhere inside here in your text box. Come up here again to the paragraph group and you can hover over the button here and it says columns. Go ahead and click on it. Split it to two columns and I'm done. Well, I guess if I wanted to keep it ugly here, because you can see that the, the columns are so tight together, I can't tell where it breaks. Well, you can change that. Just go ahead and make sure you have your cursor somewhere flashing in the text box here. Go back up, click on the Columns button, go down to More Columns, and say you would like some spacing here between your columns, something like maybe a quarter of an inch, 0.25, and click OK. That breaks it up pretty nicely. I like that. So I'll click off in a blank area and admire my work. Next, let's talk about bullets here. I'm going to go to slide three. And speaking of paragraphs, every time you hit enter at the end of a bullet, it creates a new bullet, new paragraph. A bullet is nothing more than just a little icon that says that the text after this is a point. So here's one point. In fact, we're talking about what makes our training videos unique. Well, one point or one bullet point is larger video resolution. The second point, training by an MCAS and so forth. So again, we're back to our paragraphs. Every time you hit a hard return, it's a new paragraph or in this case, a new bullet point. So I'm going to go ahead and to get rid of the bullet point, you can do it one of two ways. You can either hit the backspace key on the keyboard because remember, wherever your cursor is flashing at, you hit the backspace, it deletes what's behind it. You hit the delete key, it deletes what's in front of it. So I hit the backspace backspace key once and then hit it twice and I'm back up to the end of my last bullet here. Of course when I hit enter and if I want to get rid of that bullet I can also come up here to my paragraph group and you see where it's in orange here these um, three little dots when you hover over it it says bullets. You also can do your list numbering so I'm going to go ahead and click on that and it gets rid of it see but my cursor is still down there so I can hit the backspace key and bring it back up and so I don't have a hard return or a new paragraph below. So, all I have to do is if I want to get rid of one of these bullets again, you can click anywhere within that paragraph and go ahead and click on the highlighted bullet button to get rid of it. It's gone. Go ahead and come up here, click on it again, it, it appears. So if I go ahead and I click and drag and I select all the paragraphs, then I can come up here and either get rid of them all, in which case they're gone, or I can come back up here and change it from just bullet points and say I want it numbered in order of priority here. 
click on 123 and automatically adds it 123. If I want to come back and change this, I don't have access to it. Why? Because I forgot to click inside the text box to say, hey, I want to start working on the text, and then you can see it pops back up. So I can go ahead and click and drag and select the text here. And let me show you a few other options. You don't just have the choice of little circles or dots or squares here or numbers 1, 2, 3. You can actually click on the arrow to the right of it, drop it down, and I don't know if you can see that, but it's pretty faded. I mean, I can do my ABCs here. When I hover over it, you can see that the slide behind me is updating. It's uh, lowercase ABCs. In any case, go ahead and click on it and it accepts it. Come back up, click on the arrow again for numbering. You can do bullets and numbering. You can, get, you can get more customized here. So I'm on the numbered tab. I'm not dealing with the bulleted yet, but I'm on the numbered. That is so faded. I mean, it's that turquoise color that is blending with my theme of my template, which is fine. But if I don't like it, I can change the color to something maybe pink. Oh, that does pop. And then go ahead and click OK. Click off in a blank area to view my work. And also, you know, after I select this, don't forget you do have your bullets. You have more than just those little dots there, but when you click on the drop down arrow you have check marks and that's pretty cool too. And finally, if you don't like the check boxes here, I'm going to go ahead and select them, click and drag. Click on the arrow to the right of the bullets button, come down to bullets and numbering, and then on the bulleted tab it allows you to go ahead and select a picture out there, click on the picture button, and then you got a bunch of little pictures here. I mean, I guess that might match as near as I can tell. You can it's really tiny here, but bullets aren't supposed to be big. You know, big huge glommy pictures there next to your text. Just click OK and click off in a blank area. And I guess that's alright. Not only can you go ahead and select the pictures there, but when I click and drag and I want my own pictures I have maybe somewhere on my desktop, I can click the drop down arrow, go to bullets and numbering, click on picture, and then go ahead and click on the import button and then browse from my desktop and find some picture here that I like, maybe autumn leaves. It looks fine there, but believe me, when I click OK, that icon, those autumn leaves are going to be so tiny, it's not going to make a difference. It's just going to look like a little uh, gray box there, so I'm going to click Cancel and just leave it as is. But know that you can go out and search for other little custom icons that you have little pictures on your desktop if you have them. And also you can customize your bullets here, click on that, choose any other symbols here, we'll click Cancel and click Cancel and uh, call it good. Next, spacing in between your paragraphs. Let's say we want to put some spacing. Let me go back to slide four. Click in the uh, text box here. And let's say we would like double spacing, because right now it just looks like single spacing. Uh, spacing in between my lines here within my paragraph. Just go ahead and click anywhere in your paragraph that you want to change your spacing for. Come up here in the paragraph group on the home tab, and there's the button right there, line spacing. Click on it, and we can go to one and a half. Now notice, again, it's, it's important you understand what Microsoft sees as a paragraph. Anytime there's a hard return, it won't take that formatting and apply it to the next paragraph. So again, it's just this paragraph. I mean, that looks pretty cool. It's at least nice and readable with spacing here, so I can tell when I get to the end of the line where to go back next instead of so tight right here, which actually works fine too. But when you're given a presentation, you bundle things up a little bit too tight. It may be annoying for reading. Keeping in mind that the presentation isn't really for long documents for you to read here. It's just highlighted points. I do have more line spacing options here. You can come back up here in the paragraph group, click on it, go down to line spacing options. And it's the same thing here. We got multiple spacing. We can come down to uh, double spacing or one and a half line spacing. Click OK. So that's at one and a half lines it looks like. So I mean you got more options. Not only that, but you also have the expandable dialog box button for the paragraph here. And it's sitting right there. So again, there's more than one way to get this back up. So again, expandable dialog box button or clicking on the drop down arrow to line spacing options. You'll excuse me if I go ahead and hit undo a couple of times because I just don't like the spacing there. Well, you have no choice. Okay, next what about indents? Like for example, I mean this looks fine the way it is. For example, you want to indent the first line of your paragraph or you want to indent all the lines underneath the paragraph. It doesn't look good in uh, columns here, so let me get rid of the columns. I click anywhere in here, come up to the paragraph group, click on my column button, go back to one column. Now what if I want to go ahead and have the first line of each paragraph indented? Well, you want to turn on your rulers here. You can see mine are already turned on up at the top. If you don't have rulers here, your horizontal vertical ruler, go to your view tab and then come to the show hide group and check the box ruler. There we go, we turned it on here. And when it comes to indenting your paragraph, either it's the first line or all the other lines below, which is called a hanging indent, meaning that the first line hangs and everybody else gets pushed in. Whatever it is, you're going to be working with these three little things here. The upside down triangle, kind of looks like a triangle, is the uh, first line indent. It actually will indent the first line. The one that's um, opposite, that's pointing up against it, is the hanging indent, meaning that the first line is going to hang and everything else underneath it is going to indent. And then below that is just the 
uh, left indent button where it indents everything. There's no hanging a first line, it indents the whole paragraph. So for example, I've already had my cursor flashing here in the first paragraph. So if I just click and drag on the first line indent, click and drag it just to mess with it, see what it happens. I drag it in, see the first line's indented. And you can see it aligns right here. When I click and hold down the mouse button on the first line indent, little handle here, you can see it draws a line here that I can measure it up a little bit better and say, well, that's a little bit too far. Let me bring it back here and that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and click on my undo button a couple of times to move that back so we can try it again. Or you can click and drag your uh, first line indent all the way back out. Now what about the hanging indent? Let me go ahead and click on that little triangle. I know it's really tiny, it's hard to see that, unless you have like a lower resolution, so you may have to squint. But I am clicking on that lower triangle here and dragging it over, and there you go. It's the hanging indent, meaning that everything else is indented and the first line hangs. I'm going to go ahead and hit undo. And then finally the last one, that little uh, little square, well actually looks more like a rectangle here. It's your left indent. It means it indents everything. This whole paragraph is just going to shoot over here. Drag it. Now the reason why it didn't indent the first line is because my left indent's still way out there. So if I click and drag and bring that back in, and then I go ahead and click and drag that lower square box, it keeps everything uniform and it moves it over all together. So just make sure you don't have your first line indent straying out to the left or to the right. Keep an eye on that. You can drag them so they're both over each other as close as you can get and then use that lower square, the uh, left indent, and drag it over to the edge of the text box. Looks good. For my titles I have what are called text styles. Give it a little bit more pizzazz than just the plain text you see here that's large and it has a nice soft color to it. To do so I want to click within the text so it brings up my text box and then my contextual or related tab to the formatting is showing now so I can click on the format tab and there's my word art styles. Go ahead and click and drag and select it and then click on the more button here. I mean you can hover over these but there's more than what you see here so click on the more button and come over here and oh that's pretty cool. I'm going to click on that. Actually, humor me for a moment because I think this just looks better than about us with that kind of a formatting here for the styles. So if you want to change it, just be sure to go ahead and click within it. And then you can come to your More button, come down here and clear it. Just by clicking on Clear, it will clear whatever you have selected, which that's what I had. And so in any case, I'm going to go ahead and undo that. And then, of course, remember, if you don't want to do that many clicks by clicking here, going up to the Format tab to clear it, Remember you can just come right here to the home tab in the font group and click on the clear all formatting and but make sure obviously you have it selected like I didn't here. Oh how embarrassing. There we go. And that looks even messier so I'm going to undo that, but nonetheless it's there. Next, even though we covered bullets here, there are also different levels of bullets. For example, on our website here, we got some bullets here. You do have different hierarchical structures or levels of your bullets. So for example, let's say that this is the main bullet but I have supporting topics below that bullet. So Office 2007 training videos include sample previews and also we have user testimonials on those videos for make-believe, let's pretend here, so I can at least show you how to go ahead and work on your uh, levels of bullets. Now we already covered this in the previous training video but we're talking about formatting paragraphs so I'll, I'll lightly go over it. You can come in here and you can right click and remember you can use your increase indent button when you click on it it actually increases the indent but also changes the the bullet so we can identify not only that it's indented but also it's got a different color bullet and it also changes the font as well do you remember the shortcut key to increase indents or to decrease it in other words to decrease it so it's back out at the same hierarchical level as these other two bullets shortcut key here is shift tab to go back out or tab 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 to go in I'm going to go ahead and hit undo a couple of times to bring it back to normal. Click off in a blank area. Finally, I want to cover text direction. Let me go back to slide four because we have ghost hunters. It's got nothing to do with our company, but it would be fun to uh, have a branch of our company do that. But let's say I want some text coming down here like something haunted or spooky. Well, what I can do is if I want the text to be directed going vertically here, first of all, I need to insert my text box or create a text box. I can come to the insert tab, go to my text box here, click on it, and I get my little cross when I hover over the slide here. It actually looks like a sword. And just click and drag. And you can't see it because it's black, the black outline, until actually I'm done clicking and dragging. And then I can type in... Then come up here in the paragraph group and click on the uh, text direction button. Come down and let's do it vertically here, stacked. When I click on it, it didn't stack, did it? Well, it is stacking, except we have to change the direction of our text box. In other words, I gotta hover your mouse over the lower right hand corner so you get that two way white arrow pointing in opposite directions, and click and drag that handle and start going in vertically here and drag it far enough so it fits. Hey, there it is. Spook. I want spooky. 
and then when you're finished be sure to click off. It looks pretty cool. Maybe go ahead and add some text style to it so it looks even better and more spooky like Ghost Hunters here and I'm done. But in any case, like I said, you do have your text direction. When you click back in it, notice how your eye beam, your little mouse is facing uh, horizontally than when I click off here so my eye beam is vertically here. They call it the eye beam. So if you need to make changes, click in it. Click in, when you can, click and drag and it's going to be vertical up and down. So if you forget and it's not going vertical, just remember to change your text box so it stretches long enough vertically to go ahead and so it can actually show your vertical text here. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.